module 1.3 hardware recommendations so if you're looking at buying a computer upgrading a computer what are things that you need to be looking at um in grade 11 we looked at when you're buying a new computer and we're particularly looking at your systems unit so if you think of a desktop pc it's the actual box the purchase of any computer should always take the intended use of the device into account so do i need to be mobile if you needed to be mobile, you probably would have purchased a laptop or a tablet. Hardware specs. Do I have the right specs for the software? So when you buy um, any software, they will give you recommend minimum recommendations for the hardware in order for the software to work. So for example, if you buy a computer game, you might need to have a certain type of graphics card, minimum specs for that game to work. Um, you might need to have a certain type of CPU. You might need to have a minimum amount of RAM. Operating system, is it included or do I need to purchase this separately? So Windows um, is not always included with the purchase. Every time you buy a Mac, you will always get the Mac operating system included. But with your Windows software, some places sell it without because people might want to download a free open source um, operating system like Linux. And so they don't actually need to spend about two, two and a half thousand Rand on buying Windows 10. So you'd need to consider that. In grade 11, we looked at the three most important specs to consider when purchasing a computer central processing unit, random access memory, and hard disk drive or storage. You can get a solid state. Um, those are going to be your most important. If you're a gamer, your graphics card is going to be pretty important as well. So what the central processing unit? It is responsible for running your programs and processing data. So it's critical for the computer's performance. Speed is measured in gigahertz. They have multiple cores. You can get a dual core CPU, a quad core, an octa core. A multiple core is like having more than one processor on the chip. A standard entry level PC for your entry level user will have a cheap processor. That would probably be a Celeron um, CPU. This is sufficient for most small office, home office, personal and mobile users. So there's an example. Power users will probably have the best that they can afford. So they would have an i7, i9s are now available. So they probably have an i9 octa-core CPU, um, 10th gen, 11th gen, um, to make sure that it's the fastest. So here's an example. If you want to buy a computer, they will list a whole lot of specs. So you must be able to work out, oh, they Intel Core i5. So they're telling me, about the CPU, it's a 10th gen CPU, 4.3 gigahertz in speed. Yeah, they haven't gotten down to the nitty gritty and told me if it's dual core, quad core, octa core. Let's go to the next slide. RAM, random access memory, is the temporary storage area for data and programs that are being processed. This is a little uh, RAM card. The following terms are used to describe RAM. DIMMs, dual inline memory module. And the RAM is attached on the little black bits on that card. DDR3, DDR4, SD RAM. DDR is double data rate. SD RAM, synchronous dynamic RAM. Um, generally, if you're a gamer, you're wanting to buy DDR4 RAM. For any user, the more memory, the better as more programs and data can be loaded for processing at the same time. Power users often use programs requiring a lot of memory. So they will use 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM on, this, on the device. And in fact, um, I must actually update the slides. Um, power users, so people that are doing very heavy video um, photography, they're probably going to be using 32 to 64 gigs of RAM. Um, a gamer, your average gamer, you probably, 8 to 16 is fine. And for an average user, 4 to 8 gigs is more than enough RAM. Hard disk drive, it's the main permanent storage area for all the data and software. If we just quickly go back, uh, yeah, here's an example of our RAM. 8 gigabytes, crucial ballistic DDR4, 32 megahertz RAM. 
is telling us that it's DDR4, super fast for gaming, it's eight gigabytes. And here where it says ARGB, um, it has um, color on it, lights. So the RAM will change color um, while you gaming. If we go back, uh, the hard drive. Yeah, they tell us it's 500 gigabytes solid state drive. So they've actually got a solid state drive on here. We're looking at a hard drive first and then solid state. So we're looking at our storage. File server will have a number of large hard drives. SATA is a term that identifies an internal hard disk drive. SSD is your solid state drives are qu more quicker than mechanical hard drives. They're smaller in capacity, but more expensive. So uh, a solid state drive, generally you would buy, say, 128 gigs, 256 gigs, where your hard drive, you're buying two terabytes, four terabytes, six terabytes, because that's, um, you're going to get less storage for the same cost but this is much faster it makes a huge difference if your computer is very slow a uh, solid state drive will really make a huge difference to performance i've included uh, there's an internal hard drive and then what it looks like under the hood um ex uh, internal solid state drive you either get this sort of square one with the case and that's what it would look like on the inside all the newer ones come like this that you just plug in on your motherboard most users won't run out of hard drive space unless they're uploading a huge amount of photos and videos. You might then need to have a hard drive at least one terabyte. But as I said, your, your professional guys, they've probably got about four separate drives, maybe six, eight terabytes for each one. Um, they will have a lot connected in their computer. Some power users install a series of hard disk drives that act as one unit referred to as RAID because of the increased speed and data security. Um, and that can be really important for them. DVD or Blu-ray. This is the optical drive. They can play CDs and DVDs. Blu-ray drive players are more popular. But um, in the last two, three years, there's actually been a decline in any device actually shipping with um, any kind of optical drive. Um, if you think in terms of people wanting to store things, it's not the most popular form of storage. Um, it used to be popular at one point for videos and movies series to be on. A Blu-ray disc could hold an entire season of a series on, um, where DVD would have maybe four to six episodes. Um, nowadays, people stream series, and so they don't actually need to have. And so you can buy an external optical drive um, if you needed to. They would plug in via the USB port. But generally, whatever you're looking for, you're able to download off the internet. You don't actually need the drive. Ports. Most devices can connect to a USB port. USB 3 is faster than USB 2. You'll see USB 3 is the blue line, USB 2 is the white line. USB C is the latest port and is reversible. So, yeah, as an example of USB C, you can plug the device in anyway and it will click in first time. They refer to it as USB 3.1, but more commonly it's referred to as USB C. It, most of your Android phones and tablets are designed to use this, phone, this port. So Huawei, Samsung, LG, Sony, they're all using this type of port. HDMI is used for connecting your Apple TV to your smart TV. Um, once again, HDMI is not the only port. Um, there's also DisplayPort, there's VGA. Firewire and Thunderbolt ports are used for high speed data and video connections. So if you're working with a lot of video footage, you're probably going to be having a Firewire port on your device. Disabled users or physically challenged users. Disabled people need tailor made solutions that combine hardware devices and software in different ways, depending on their disabilities. So different types of disabilities. If you have visual impairments or you are blind, you could get a braille keyboard, which has the braille dots to help you type. You could have magnification devices, so software in the device that makes things much bigger, easier to see. You could have large key keyboards, that you can see the letters a lot better, braille printers so that you, um, it would print out all the dots so the person can run their finger across and they could read what they've typed. Hearing impaired or deaf, they can have vibration devices, so something on their wrist that will vibrate when something's happening, tell them to go check their phone, displaying visual notices when the computer would normally make a sound. So instead of the computer um, 
making that sound when you're doing something wrong, something will pop on the screen and they can read it. Motor control, so if they're paralyzed fully or partially, got poor motor control or they've got really bad arthritis um, and so they can't um, use their hands as much. You get eye tracking devices, head movement devices, large key keyboards, large track balls, joysticks, foot pedal controls, and sip and puff devices. And these help them to be able to use technology to communicate and stay in contact and connected in the world um, to perform jobs. The value of ICT, information and communications technology, efficiency, productivity, and accuracy. Efficiency is getting things done with less cost and effort. And with computers, often, while there might be an initial cost to purchase, over time, they will make that, you'll make that money back. And it's a lot less effort. Productivity, once you get done in a specific amount of time for a specific cost. So computers can do jobs and they don't get tired. They don't ask for a, a lunch break or a salary increase. They just do what they need to do. They're very productive and it'll be consistent productivity. So if you, you're, you run a car manufacturing plant, and you manufacture, say, 100 cars per day, every day it will make 100 cars. Accuracy, ensuring there are no errors in input or output. And once again, with your accuracy, as long as the software has been created with no errors, the computer will run it with no errors. Accessibility, some examples of how ICT improves accessibility. Um, remote surgery, so a doctor in South Africa can operate on a patient in Kenya using the internet. There are challenges to this, particularly in um, African countries where often load shedding happens, um, could be hours with no power and so generators are needed. But um, it's really amazing how um, a doctor in South Africa is able to um, use controls and control something in another country while it's operating on a person. Data or information access using the internet, distance education, or if you think of last year, it's online learning, um, cell phone banking, EFT, online shopping, um, it really has made a difference. Yeah, that's the last one.